I'm here at Red Hat Summit with Tashara Kataki. And so OpenShift, of course, is, is something that's been around for a while. Uh, you've now got OpenShift container storage. Can you talk about how those two things fit together? Yeah, so uh, OpenShift uh, has been uh, there. I mean, we, are, we, we just announced OpenShift 4, uh, but uh, this is based on Kubernetes 1.12, but that represents 12 releases. But if you go back to uh, OpenShift uh, 3.1, which is based on Kube 1, uh, .o, right? Uh, this is based, uh, even from that time, uh, we realized that um, OpenShift needs storage. Uh, apps need it. Most apps are um, stateless, uh, except stateless apps need some kind of a storage. So, uh, so developers need uh, some kind of a read-write access or a read-only access or something like that. So, so that's one use case. The other use case is um, there are lots of um, what I would call um, uh, we call them infrastructure services, but think about things like monitoring and logging and uh, metering and all these things. They need uh, storage, right? So, so we worked upstream with the community and we uh, created the Kubernetes persistent volume. Um, so that is something that Red Hat kind of contributed uh, towards, right? And uh, the OpenShift uh, storage team, uh, the OpenShift container storage team, and uh, the Gluster team at that time uh, contributed to that too. And then uh, Gluster was the first one that we supported uh, as a storage platform back then. Now fast forward, uh, we just launched OpenShift 4, um, you know, and uh, it's the same thing, right? Like, you know, we need some storage. And so uh, with OpenShift uh, 4, you're going to um, uh, also see this whole idea of operators and operator framework making uh, life very easy for admins to um, install and maintain components, be it system components or applications, and that's the pattern that the OpenShift container storage is also going to uh, follow in terms of the ease of install using the operator and the lifecycle management that comes with the operator lifecycle manager. Uh, so I think we are kind of excited. Uh, there is already upstream work in this. There's a Rook operator which basically installs Ceph uh, and so, um, and and so um, that that's basically what we are working towards. I mean, and uh, OpenShift Container Storage is going to expose all three different kinds of um, uh, interfaces: S3, uh, file, and uh, block. And so, between the three of them, I think we're pretty covered in terms of what applications uh, uh, will need to uh, use from a storage perspective. Are there are there any particular types of workloads that that you guys are looking at that are are more benefit more from this type of storage uh, so uh, I think cloud native applications uh, I would say applications uh, that uh, are organizations that want to use hybrid cloud uh, I mean think about it this way I mean one of the big um, uh, value that OpenShift brings is that it is a platform uh, that runs on all different footprints, be it the public cloud, be it Azure, or be it uh, Google Cloud Platform, or be it AWS, or in your data center, it could be a private cloud, um, it could be VMware, it could be uh, OpenStack. Uh, so in any of these cases, or the it's the same OpenShift, the same operational way in which you install, maintain, manage OpenShift, and now we have automated that with uh, the operator hub uh, and the operator. So, uh, so we are the 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 OpenShift container storage is going to be natively integrated. So that means that now, uh, not only do you get the OpenShift con uh, OpenShift platform, uh, obviously on all these uh, on all these footprints, but also a storage that goes with it, which is natively integrated. So now you have a hybrid cloud, truly. Uh, hybrid um, uh, st uh, storage solution uh, which is natively integrated. Now in terms of, that would be kind of my generic answer to the question, but in terms of where we see a lot of excitement really is this uh, um, in the world of analytics. Like every company, uh, if you think about uh, you know, uh, in some ways, uh, you know, compute is uh, is commoditized, right? Like where uh, where there is real value for companies is really the data, uh, and uh, and they want to extract uh, meaningful information from that, and data needs to live somewhere, and that's storage. So I think so. So the the world of AI, ML, and deep learning, and deep learning itself is a voracious. Uh, um, user of data, right? It needs a lot of data for it to be uh, uh, meaningful, and so uh, that's the kind of uh, storage. Uh, that's the kind of workloads which will uh, want a will want uh, 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 cheap, cost-effective storage, and something like uh, the OpenShift container storage uh, with its distributed. Uh, 
um, a storage model will help help with that. So, so I would say those types of workloads will benefit especially uh, with the uh, OpenShift container storage. So, and how does the uh, Open Data Hub fit into that when you're talking about AI and ML? Okay, so Open Data Hub is a uh, reference architecture from Red Hat. Uh, it shows you how uh, to run um, a data scientist workflow, uh, workflow on top of OpenShift. Uh, uh, so if you're if you're a data scientist, uh, you could be, for example, uh, you you might want to uh, use Jupyter uh, to uh, to look at and visualize data, to run models, uh, and then uh, you might want to use things such as Spark. Uh, or TensorFlow and other uh, frameworks uh, to do your model training. Uh, you might want to um, uh, then be able to serve, you want to iterate this, you want to uh, do hyperparameter uh, tuning, uh, you might want to then uh, serve these models, version them, serve them, uh, because then they become what we call as intelligent applications because they have now. So that is the reference architecture that uh, we are building, we are showing uh, how to do this on top of OpenShift, how to containerize, and the other thing really is uh, Data scientists love this, right? Like you, you saw a little bit about that at the in the keynote yesterday when uh, Audrey was a data scientist yeah. from Exxon Mobil. Uh, she was saying that you know, previous to this, uh, what would have happened is that they would have to go to uh, and get time allocated on a GPU machine, and you know once the time is up, the time is up. But here they can have a much more shared platform. So the Open Data Hub really is showing. Uh, our customers uh, and our partners. So uh, that's the other thing in the AI space really is that uh, it's a partner uh, ecosystem led story uh, and therefore uh, for us, right, like we are not shipping TensorFlow, right? right. So uh, we, we are bringing in partners who can augment that and for those partners this reference architecture says Open Data Hub will really help. It's built on operators. Uh, it takes things such as uh, it has a Jupyter Hub, uh, it uh, is launched through the OpenShift web console and then as a data scientist now you can start going and start building your models etc. So that it, it has all those and we're going to bring in more and more technologies into it and show for example hi, uh, how do you do hyper parameter tuning with Seldon. Uh, so those are the things that are already uh, in the pipeline, some of this already exists, but that's the idea of Open Data Hub. I look forward to seeing where OpenShift goes next. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, sure. thank you. Thank you.